here, but here we go. We're going to get this show. Have anybody where? In Twitch. Oh. Because we're streaming. Um, yeah. Now it's time to be on my worst behavior. Oh no! Yeah. Darren, I'm gonna make full use of that end pass you gave me. No, I never gave you that pass. Full use, Darren. Full use. Nope. Oh my god. Darren, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> All right. Well, we are uh, we are live. We are streaming. Uh, it's been a long time. I. No idea what I'm doing. Oh my god! <clears throat> yes. Is, uh, Sirenscape up? Uh, yes, Sirenscape is up. I just haven't hit play because I was. The thing I was having the hardest time figuring out was getting um, OBS to stream and record the desktop audio. It was doing fine with my mic, but any and... audio I had playing in the background was not happening. And that was a thing that screwed with my original uh, campaign that I was running, and it was uh, not fun. Uh, now, I know nobody can really see, but I have set up Twitch so that um, whenever I transition to a new scene in OBS, it looks like a curtain is dropping. Ooh. I got little circus icons and decorations going on. So there is that. Um, fancy. Yeah, yeah. I think it's pretty fancy. Computer, turn off the lamp. Oh, my. Computer, I'm going to throw you into. Computer, turn off the lamp. Thank you. Jeez. All right. I mean, I I gotta get the gotta get the claws going in the camera. So otherwise, what's the point of wearing them? You know. All right. All right. Hmm. Well. Good evening, creepy kitties that are not in the actual audience because nobody's here yet. Uh, eventually, we might establish an audience. Who knows? Um, this is Extinction Curse campaign by Pathfinder. Uh, we have a number of people here of varying degrees of experience. And we're just here to have fun. We're going to go and introduce ourselves. We will start with... The man playing Felix. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Powerful. Fuck. That is that amazing intro. Oh wow, that that was Mwah. chef's kiss. Chef's kiss. <laughs> okay, so uh, David, this is David. Yes. Introduce yourself. Say a little bit about yourself. You don't have to say much. You don't have to give away too much. You could be like, I'm David. And that's it. Mic drop. Uh, IRL or character? Um, oh. A little bit of both. Uh. <laughs> I mean, again, if you don't want to say anything about your IRL shit, just talk about your character. Who you got? Okay. Who are you playing? I am Felix. The, uh, Animal Wrangler for the circus. Excellent. I train oh, cats. Sorry. <laughs> and my companion is Mr. Kitty, a fire leopard. Wunderbar, wunderbar. Mike! Mr. Onid? Paging Mr. Onid. Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I did not realize that you were referring to me. <laughs> Hi, my name is Darren. I'm playing a fungus leshy bard by the name of Mike Onid. 
<laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. For anybody who knows, you know. Okay. And of course, Mr. Kitty is listed as a character, but that is Felix's animal companion, Fire Leopard. Earned through blood, sweat, and tears via playing a game called uh, The Fall of Plank Plague Stone. So we're going to move past Mr. Kitty and go with Tuck Buckerford. Hi, my name's Charles. I'll be playing Tuck Buckerford, a halfling druid who was just a small town boy who wanted to see the world, so I ended up joining up at this year's circus. Excellent, excellent. And I do have my leshy companion, Bacon, with me. Bacon. It's a leshy what loves bacon. I never would have guessed. <laughs> All right. And Laven Deer. I am Courtney playing Laven Deer, Laven Deer, whatever. And <laughs> I am a, I am a witch uh, of human ancestry. And I am a mystic seer with a uh, with an albino bat companion that gives me my spells, and I am also circus born, I believe. So these are uh, my what? people, and my my uh, my circus, my monkeys, essentially. <laughs> my circus, my monkeys. I like that. I like that. <laughs> It is your circus, and these are your monkeys. Well, it doesn't belong to me, but these are my family. These are my yeah. uh, my friends. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, why? Why is this not doing what I want it to do? All right. All right. No, I got this. I know what's going on. Oh, yeah, no, no. I totally knew that that was what I was trying to do. So we're going to do that. We're going to do that. We're going to add another one. And this one's going to be... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, um, a little bit of this will be improv as the time I had allotted to better hash out all uh, a good chunk of this um, section that we are about to come up with uh, or play through was spent dealing with technical difficulties. Everybody's favorite thing. It's everybody's Sounds favorite like thing, right? excuses to me. Uh, yeah, but they're my excuses. I mean... Not that that makes much of a difference, but, you know. So, I am going to set up... Um, a bit of rain. It's a bit rainy. This is also a first time... There we go. We got the rain going. All right. Let me go with Moody. You have all had various reasons for joining the circus. And those re reasons brought you into the claws of Mistress Dusklight. And her celestial menagerie. It quickly proved to be anything but fun and games. Felix, you have had the fortune of being kin to Mistress Dustlight, albeit distantly related, and that did not spare you from her abuses. Mike, you joined the circus perhaps with great 
ambitions. Unfortunately, you find yourself part of Mistress Dusklight's freak show. And let's just say it's not been going well. Kind of hurts my feelings, jeez. Yeah, well, she's not nice. She's very much not a nice person. Besides, Mike is beautiful. Yeah. Like I said, she's mean. She obviously cannot see Mike's true beauty. And here's a larger picture for folks, just in case you can't see my uh, character icon. Uh, I will go ahead and post it as well, because thankfully I have images here, and I'd like to let our audience map where, where did I put it? Oh, there it is. Good image record. There you guys go. That's Mike. Isn't he handsome? Oh, gorgeous. Mm. Tuck. That looks like a fun guy, all right. <laughs> Tuck, you came probably with uh, your typical country pluckiness, eager to help out, and found that, well, Mistress Dustlight just is not terribly kind to the animals of her circus. And while getting into a fight was probably not something you'd want to contemplate, at least not at first level. At least you could spend some time making it easier for the animals in the circus. And that is essentially what you did. She gave you the most backbreaking work, but you were also able to make sure that the animals were better cared for. And... I do my best for the cat. Hey. Huh? I do my best for the cat. Yes. Um, in fact, there's one that's caught your eye. Mistress Dusklight has been quite proud of this find. A rather put-upon looking feline with smoldering fur. She has been very upset with how hard it's been to train, but you've been able to prevent her from showing it the bulk of her wrath. And, of course, Lavendia. You have, unfortunately, come here with your own ambitions and found yourself stuck in the midway treated as just a common parlor trick. Sounds about right. But all of that is going to change. As... <laughs> By the way, audience, meet, I think that's Koa. Uh, that is uh, uh, Felix's Actual animal companion. <laughs> he will occasionally pipe in. Uh, my felines might occasionally make themselves known as well. Um, so one rainy evening, and there have been so few of those of late, the lot of you, along with a few others, have elected to depart the Celestial Menagerie. Whatever reason Mistress Dusklight was able to hold you here, it has finally gotten pushed too far. Some people come here to the Celestial Menagerie because they have nowhere else to go. Other people come here and end up stuck in Mistress Dusklight's circus because of blackmail. There are a number of reasons you might have come to join the circus and remain despite the abuses. 
But tonight, you've had enough. Tonight, you're going to get the hell out. I'm going to share a map with you guys. I don't think you're going to be able to see anything on it if I have everything set up properly. Oh. Kind of defeats the purpose of sharing a map, then. Well, then I'm going to put you on the map, and it will oh, be set up properly. Oh, see, see, you did not specify that. That is true. That is true. Um, but then I realized I set up the wrong map. So sorry, I gotta grab the other one. I know I'm horrible. Terrible. Mm. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Okay, there we go. Now I have the right map. Silly me for picking the DM map. Rain, I'm gonna have clouds. I'm gonna go back to the rainy mood. We did random rain. There we go. And we're gonna add. It's evening because all the best escapes happen. Oh, not night vision. We don't want night vision. What time of day? I mean, I wouldn't mind night vision, but you know what I mean. Yeah, might come in handy. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Oh, there is one more thing I need to do because... Forget showing a grid. All right. So. Uh, I don't know why I did that, but... Here we go. I'm going to go ahead. I already have Mr. Kitty on here. I'm going to put Mike, Felix, Tuck, Lavendier, and we're going to make sure that um, Mike is now in the party sheets. Excellent. So, Mike... You, oh, do, 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 do. PC, 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 PC. And over here. There we go. You are in your cramped cell. I need to not have. Uh, where is disable line? Oh, so I got that. I got that. I got that. Why is it not? Oh, this is weird. <clears throat> Bear with me. Thank you, Koa. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. 
right. Um. <clears throat> Once again. I'm actually going to not deal with a certain thing right now. Uh, Tuck, <laughs> quick question for you. Uh, when you are out and about, what is your typical light source? That's her. I've got low light vision and I've got bacon who has dark vision, so Well you got bacon who has dark oh. vision. But even with low light vision on a dark, cloudy, rainy night you might want something. Well, I could have produced flame in my hand, no problem. Alright. And that's about the equivalent of a torch, correct? Mm-hmm. Alright. Bam, torch. Um, and Felix, you also have low light vision. I'm going to have you two starting together. Cool. Um, Lavendier. Um, I have you with a, let's see, I think I gave you, I also gave you a torch. I'm not sure if you have a light spell or something. Um, being a human uh, seen in the dark is not typically something you're capable of doing um, oh you have dancing lights so that is probably a good thing to use um, and that that acts like a torch so I am going to give you the effect of a torchlight. Oh, I already have. Yay me. Um, okay. Good job, you. I'm, I'm. Oh dear. <laughs> All right, and Mike, you have dark vision, if I recall. And low light is, vision. And low light vision, which is a neat That's combination. That's a lot of vision. That is. So, well, I mean, have you seen how many eyes Mike has? Yeah, yeah, there's there's a lot of those. Yeah. Keep okay. dark vision eyes just because, you know, they would be ha come in handy. Tuck and Felix. Um, Tuck. The plan has been for tonight. Myron, the sort of leader of all of those who have wanted to GTFO from Mistress Dusklight Celestial Menagerie. More like Infernal Menagerie, as he would say. Uh -huh. Has um, given you all a time to be ready. You will have uh, you will have to wait. You are you and Felix are supposed to meet up in Felix's wagon. It's a tiny, cramped wagon, but at least he has a place that isn't like shit, shitty tents or leaky shacks um, to stay in. And uh, you are then supposed to wait for Myron to appear. Lavendier, you are waiting on the man known as the Professor. Um, an older man who uh, isn't very free with his name. Um, and then between your two groups, 
This is supposed to be after these two have gotten a number of the other performers out of the circus. Y'all are supposed to be the last. Because between all of you, you're supposed to get Mike out of the freak show pen. Wait, she keeps us in a pen? Yes. Wow. She's horrible. Uh, that was clearly the last straw for my character. She's yeah. Uh, Mike, or not Mike, sorry, Felix, today has been a bad day. Uh, you made a grievous mistake. Well, probably wouldn't call it a mistake. And uh, you know, it was your choice. Nobody would regret it. You did the right thing. But Mistress Dusklight was rather pissed that her prized fiery kitty wouldn't perform in the rain for a demonstration. You got in the way of her whip, and both of you suffered for it. Ouch. In the dark of the night, as the rain patters down on your wagon, there is a knock on the door. You better have your things ready, for it is time to go. What do you do? Are we ready for the escape meow? <laughs> <laughs> All right, meow. Okay. Uh, answering the door, it's Tuck. He's all ready to go to Mexico. <laughs> God. You boys like Mexico? This is you boys, let's go. Is, All right. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. All right. Uh, we do have an audience member. For those who are in the know, Evil Outcast is watching the show. What? Uh, oh, no. We must never find he out. Plays in, he plays in our uh, Monday... Eberron game. Okay. So, not too long after Tuck arrives, and um, Felix, you shoulder your things, there's another knock on the door. Answering it this time is a... Uh, when you answer it this time, it's a dark-haired man in a rather soaked and sad-looking top hat. He has a goatee, and he's... Um, Stout, not quite plump, but not, not, definitely not fit. And that would be Myra. All right. Are you ready to get your cat? Yes, indeed. Okay. Let's blow this popsicle stand. All right. I have no idea what the medieval equivalent of that would be. They have popsicles in Galarian. I have decided. It better. I mean, what's the point of having being in a magical world if they don't have popsicles? Right? I mean, come on. Ray of Frost and you got popsicles. There you go. Mm. A little more to it than that. Oh. I gotta do that. Okay. There we go. Gotta unlock the tokens. So around this time, a lot of people are sleeping or at least staying in their wagons. Maybe in some of the larger wagons playing cards. Um, anything to be out of the rain. Ooh. I'm going to slink from shadow to shadow. Uh, Miss... Lavendier, you have been allowed a rather nice uh, uh, canopy tent that Mistress Dusklight has so generously allowed you to sleep under, even though there's no ground to it and rainwater gets in all the time. And you're also supposed to perform out of it as well. Oh, dear. Yeah. Tell why you saw out of it. Is there a reason why I'm in a dark room? Uh, you should, if you open up the combat tracker, 
double click uh -huh. your character, it, it should center on your icon. And your icon should have a light source that allows you to see. Do you oh, see? Oh, yes. I, I can see things. Okay, hold on. Don't, don't, no, 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 not yet. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, of course, uh, Miss Lavendia, you are also waiting. You are waiting for the professor to come and fetch you. He is an, uh, another man who um, has been working under uh, Mistress Dusklight's tooth and claw. Um... He's been rather upset with uh, her treatment of the uh, people in the freak show, uh, which is a dirty word as far as he is concerned. Ah, so I'm waiting. Indeed. Though it, you don't have to wait long, around the time that you have all uh, discussed being able to depart, there is a rap at your canopy door. Oh dear. Oh. Uh, a rat? No, a rap. Like, a loud knocking. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Uh, I... I'm scared. Uh, <laughs> okay. Lavender! Lavender, are you in there? Oh. oh, yeah, I'm right here. Good, good. You have all your things, right? We must depart soon. I have all my things, yes. All right, excellent. Let us make haste. Everybody's stuck inside. This is the perfect time to depart. Let's go. Towards right. the, uh, we have to, we have to get, we have to get Mike. All right, I grab all my things and start, uh, following them. Okay. So he leads you out into the thoroughfare. Past a few... Past the Glen of Uncommon wander Wonders, you, and eventually you are going to make it to the Sanctum of Sublime Spectacles, otherwise known as Mistress Ducks Dusklight's Freak Show. Felix and Tuck. Sneaking out of Felix's wagon, you stealthily make your way over to the pen where Mr. Kitty is kept. He is looking miserable. He's drenched, he's cold, and there is nothing there to cover him. You had created a shelter for him, Felix. But it's clear after the recent out, um, after the recent punishment from Mistress Dusklight, it has been torn apart. The various uh, fireproofed canvases shredded and lying on the ground. Oh, poor Mr. Kitty. Here, have some meat. It's messed up, man. Mr. Kitty per perks up at your approach. <clears throat> um, Noms down on the meat that you have brought. Are you ready to go get away from here? You're not sure what that means, but you're pretty sure it means yes. Or rather, you are pretty sure what it means, and that it means yes. <laughs> um, this just ain't no way to treat a living thing. All right. Do I need to uh, pick the lock or anything? Um, it's it's locked from the outside, so just uh, the only thing you would probably have to worry about is these locks are squeaky as fuck. Ah. Um, 
Wait a second. Wait up. Can you want me to grease it up real good? Yep. That cast grease on the lock. Okay. Yeah. It is exceptionally oiled now. <laughs> All right. So you have greased the lock, and thankfully, with a. Uh, you are able to unlatch it and open the gate without uh, making much of a noise. All right, stay close. Excellent. Oh, it's according to Kikak. Mr. Kitty bounds out and um, wander uh, circles around you, rubbing up against your legs. Your hips, more like. Uh, there's a sizzling as your wet clothing uh, meets his fiery fur. Ah, that's nice. Oh, I completely lost my place. Here we go. Awesome. Phone, you are now a bookmark. Meanwhile, Elsewhere, Mike O'Neill. Yes. Reminds me of my dragonborn paladin, Sir Terry O'Type. Nah. You. Nice. <laughs> you are um, across from a couple of people in the sanctum of sublime spectacles. A rather morose looking Varician woman with a number of tattoos all over her body. Just sort of slumped against a wall. Mm. Her name is Carmine. She has been called the Living Atlas. Why they call her that? Well, it's a living. <laughs> <laughs> ah, her tattoos are a map. Oh, you know it, like uh. An adventure path is going to be great when it's based off of Waterworld. <laughs> uh, thank you, Tuck. Um, and the one that is sort of kitty corner from you, uh, so, t so, so, the Living Atlas, Carmi Carmine, is in the pen across from you. Kitty corner mm -hmm. from you um, is. The repulsive frog girl, who is a small and rather underfed bogger, who is named Sump Satan. Mm. She's been here since she was attacked. Oh, jeez. Her croak. Frills the crowds. That's one of those hot ones. Yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Felix, Mr. Kitty, and Tuck, you are able to make your way south towards. The sanctum of sublime spectacles in order to free Mike O'Neill. I'm kind of helping you guys move. <laughs> <laughs> 
Probably more over here there, Felix. And it's around this time that you round the corner just as Lavendier and the Professor arrive. With Myron keeping watch. All right. Here. I purloined the key to Mike. Mike's cell. Be quick. We don't have much time. Release me. Doors over hey, here. Ours. Wait, what? Over here, near where L Lavender is. <laughs> oh, now I can see it. <laughs> okay, so you guys enter. Yes. Hell yeah. All right. So you enter, and to the in the cell to the immediate north is the repulsive frog girl or at least that's what she's billed as you only know her as sump sadie there is also match stick flynn who shares the southern portion of the cell that the living atlas is in and that's the big cell immediately in kind of in the uh directly across from the door Matchstick Flynn is a tiefling and uh, due to his resistance to a uh, to fire, he managed to survive the fire that destroyed the orphanage he was living at. My, what a delightful series of coincidences. Mm hmm There is also, of course, in the southernmost cell, the marvelous Bat Boy. He's a bat, huh? Not really. No, oh, he's a caped vigilante then. No, not quite. Oh. He's a half orc with a cleft palate, claw like hands, who has been forced to undergo surgeries over the years to better resemble a bat. Ooh. What the fuck? That's weird that they have cosmetic surgeons like that. Right. And yet they don't have popsicles. It's fucking nuts, man. The disparity. Mike is right down here. Let's go. Can we not free all of them? I believe Mike has already attempted to talk them into leaving. They're all either blackmailed are too afraid of Mistress Dusklight. And they... I can't afraid no ghost. Let's do this shit. Yeah. And these forlorn figures in these cages just kind of look at y'all as you enter and... Eh. They don't even... They don't seem to give two, di two shits that you guys are here when you are technically not supposed to be. Sorry, Felix, I'm moving you so I can better have access to the map here. That's fine. And I'm going to move you there, Mike, also, so I can have better access to the map. And... Opening the cage! Alright, so with that, you are able to unlock Mike Onid's cell. Mike, pack up your mycelium. Let's go. <laughs> yes, it is time for me to rise. Okay. Something, something last of us. <laughs> I tried picking up my book and it turns out the bookmark was uh, not doing so hot. All right. Hold on. 
I am... There we go. Okay. Excellent. So now, as you guys are escaping the sanctum of sublime spectacles... You find, as you exit, that you have been made. Well, as a leshy, that, that is fairly accurate. You know... Good point. Good point. Jellico, otherwise known as Jellico Bounce Bounce, a rather less than pleasant clown, along with A mechanical carny. One of Mistress Dusklight's favorite little automatons that have made her life much easier are outside. You also see behind them Pardon me as I pull up the info. Now, Jellico and a mechanical carny, that might be something that you wouldn't really worry about. But behind them is Avora. Avora? The orc strong woman. I like where this is going. I mean, um, come on. As well as Gigi. Or Gigi. It's actually Gigi, but if you say Gigi, Gigi uh, you're going to probably make them for uh, very upset. What was it? Gigi? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Hold on a second. That's the that's the thing. Where's the stats? All right, well, uh, <clears throat> one moment. I am trying to. Here we go. Okay. Gigi was not given a proper, uh... Burial. Oh, sorry. <laughs> not quite. Um, wasn't given a proper, like, entry. So. Do, 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 do. Oh, right, Gigi. Um. And... You know that uh, that Evora loves to... I hope you guys can see everything on the map here right now. Jesus. Um, Evora likes to train at all hours, but mostly at night, and is kind of hardcore in her training. So as you all step out of the Sanctum of Sublime Spectacles. Jellico Bounce Bounce, who's, you know, maybe it's good that, that Michelle couldn't make it. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, everybody loves clowns. And Jellico Bounce Bounce is such a happy clown. 
Oh. Holy shit, that clown is awesome. <laughs> Wow. Are you all thinking of leaving tonight? Oh, that wouldn't be good. That wouldn't be nice. That wouldn't be right. Now, I'm not exactly one with a whole lot of stones to throw about the way people talk, but uh, shut your goddamn mouth. No. Oh, man, and they call me a freak. <laughs> well, let's just say we all know our own kind. Well, I'll tell you what I know. You're oh. fertilizer. That's rude. What? It was a compliment. Oh, oh, well, thank you. I, I sort of gesture at my fungus-based body. Oh, well, <laughs> how wonderful. Um, Evora, G Gigi, would you help me round up these rascals and make sure that uh, Mistress Dusklight knows of their naughtiness? Evora kind of looks at Jellico and then looks at all of you. I'm busy. Gigi, to the big top. And they just kind of wander off. And you see Jellico bounce, bounce, noticeably droop. As they disappear into the big top. Nice. <laughs> um, well. Fine. It's just you... Me and my mechanical carny! As he motions at you all, and the mechanical carny begins to hop forward. Initiative. Okay. Here's my initiative. <laughs> Initiatized. Very nice. And I am going to change things up. As much as I love this rain, I feel like we need battle music. Or maybe not full-on battle music, but I'll get I'll go back to our lovely circus tracks and pick the one that is Spooky Clowns. Yay! Man, it's a shame Michelle isn't here. Right? <laughs> Or at least I, I think it's supposed to be playing. I said spooky clowns. <clears throat> spooky clowns. Oh my god, fine. Maybe not that one. Maybe that one. Oh no, no, no. I prefer that one. There we go. Do that one. That's that's spooky enough. Yay. All right. Mike, you are first, sir. Okay. Come with me, and you'll be in a world of pure pain, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> and that is my uh, inspire courage. Oh, okay. Cool. So huh. now Not what I was expecting. Yeah. So sixty feet radius. Everybody is going to get a plus one to attack rolls, damage rolls, and saves against fear. Awesome. Where are you huffing your spores right now? Huh? Said, so are we huffing your spores right now? Yes. Uh, probably. Uh, Computer. Well, on it's, the magic, lamp. it's one of the consequences of, uh, you know. Computer. Turn off the lamp. Hanging around a fungus. 
This is right. the thesis we have for you. So do I, is there, wait a second. I'm pretty sure I can just... Um, is there a way for me to drag the effect on the people, or...? Um, let's see. What sort of effects does it have? Is there an effect for it? Um, not seeing one. Well, I can target, but... Okay, hold on. Let me take a look. For anybody who is watching, whether it's the live stream or whenever I post this shit on YouTube. <clears throat> stuff. Stuff on YouTube. I didn't say that word. Darren, don't oh. swear. I think, um, uh, I think, uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, you got it? Yeah. So I'm just Excellent. Gonna click it. Yeah, because uh, I do have the drag and drop thing, so it yeah. should do what it needs to do. All right, that was my first action. Okay. And my second action, I'm going to light them up with the uh, electric arc. So, and I'm going to target Mr. Clown and Mr. Automaton. Excellent. Very good. Yeah. Uh, are you going to do any movement? Nope. That was oh, that's right. That was all your actions. All right. Jellico lets out a... I've had electrical buzzards that were shock more shocking than shocking shock. Better. He bounces forward and attacks. Not as shocking as what I'm going to do to your mom tonight. Well, I never. That's oh, going to be the right. worst yeast infection ever. It's a mom. He bounces forward. He kind of, he kind of waddles as he lands right before. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Um, and he lashes out with a dagger. Now you normally see him, Felix. You normally see him with uh, bowling pins, of all things. Um, the daggers he tends to have hidden. Um, but yeah, he lashes out with a dagger. Oops! Sorry! I missed! I'll... I should probably keep the edges away. Mistress Dustlight doesn't want you damaged. She would rather do that herself. And then he smack tries to smack you with the bowling pin. Thankfully... This is non-lethal damage. And that's his action. The mechanical carny is a little... The, the electricity definitely fucked with it. And as it recovers from its damage... By the way, here's an image of the mechanical carny. Oh man, that thing is awesome. It rolls forward and uses its spring loaded boxing glove on Mr. Kitty. Oh, oh. Go back. Do your tents. God damn. Tuck. Hmm. Well, I know that thing's far above the lightning, so I'm going to go with the electric sparks as well. There. Okay, so save and... Oh, 
Okay. All right. So you just and you just used electric cart. Yep. Okay. And with my oh, that's strange. What? This is one d four plus five. That's because of the oh. uh, inspire courage. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was yeah. just like, wait. Well, while I'm being courageous, I might as well like uh, huck a sling bullet at somebody. Hey, there you go. That's your. Let's see if I can't pop off that, uh, Cardi. Ooh, nice, yeah. nice, very good. Solid. Oh, you're just yeah. Uh, it's it's metal. Okay. So. Uh, you you launch out the electrical arc. The Carney again. <laughs> that was not acceptable on circus grounds. And Jellico kind of shivers and goes again. Felix, you're up. You are very quiet, Felix. Oh, hold on. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? A little bit better. Let me, oh. I'm going to turn down the music a little. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to lash out with my whip and try to trip up Jellico. Okay. Uh, you point. have you yeah there you go. Do it again. Damn. I feel like I need to lower the volume on the uh, music a little bit. There we go. There we go. Hey, much better. All right. Then pounce, Mr. Kitty. There we go. Nice. Ooh. Ah. -ha! Is he tripped or is he not tripped? Okay, so tripping ends up being a, um, as I understand it, an opposed check. So you hit him, ah, you, you okay. attacked him, but in order to trip him, you would need to make, I believe, since I don't want to waste time looking it up, I'm going to say in this case you would have to make an athletics Athletic? check. That strikes okay. me as being a little more appropriate than an acrobatics and then he has to try and counter uh, that. That actually, no, he doesn't counter it. It's not. It, there's. They don't do opposed checks anymore. He has to just do better on his acrobatics, and he definitely does. So he manages to get out, but you did damage him, and then Mr. Kitty pounced on him. Hmm. Um, and you had Mr. Kitty do a cat pounce, which allowed, right? Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, I think cat pounce is a special move I don't have access to yet. Oh, okay. Uh, so we'll just say he, he attacks and, uh, maybe he's too wounded to do his proper cat pounce. We'll worry about it later. That is a problem for future us. Um, right. okay. So he, he attacks. And Jellico starts to ah! oh, uh, All right, all right. Um, the Connie won't stop, but I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Your reign of terror ends, meow. <laughs> 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 I mean, normally I'd say let him go, but uh, that is a really good pun. <laughs> oh, I, all right. 
you can can you just knock me out? Here, here, dropping the clubs. He starts pulling out like knives from his sleeves and tossing them. Dropping the clubs, tosses the bowling ball pins. Just that's it. <laughs> no, anyway. kill him dead. Kill him. Ah! I'm gonna let him on fire. Ah! All right, Lavender, you're up. I mean, I did say he was fertilizer, wasn't? Didn't I? Um. So I did. I realized I didn't train uh, in any of my hands or spells, or I didn't prepare any of them. Oh, well, that's easy. Uh, you just have to... All right, for cantrips, uh, you should be seeing what I what I see. A whole bunch of dots next to a bunch of cantrips, right? Yeah. So you don't want to pick more than one dot per cantrip because you're just trying to learn... Uh, you're just trying to s select the cantrips you know for the day. So just click on each cantrip you want to know, and we'll go from there. Okay. You were preparing to depart for the day. So you might have wanted to use, say, dancing lights, or or uh, for, um, or maybe press the digitation to impress the crowd. But that doesn't mean you didn't want to get telekinetic projectile to jump into combat or something. Right. You copy. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So those are your prepared cantrips. Uh, actually, hold on a moment. Let me get back here. Um, we don't have first level spells for you. We got to work on that. Uh, well, this is our introductory thing. We're just going to stick with cantrips. You used your spells earlier in the day for your show. Oh, there we go. So now all you have is the cantrips. Now, if you click on the magnifying glass next to whichever cantrip you want, you will see that you can do things like say telekinetic projectile. You can cast the, you can grab the sword icon, drag it over somebody, and that'll be your spell attack. And then you can. Oh, Cleo, honey, I need those books. Oh, fine. Oh, jeez. Mm. Are you okay, hon? No. Sorry, guys. Well, I've been, I've been fighting. Um, bugs here and i've um also been trying to make sure that the cats don't get fleas this season nice very good nice what did you do describe the action that drops jellico bounce bounce ah uh, so i noticed some sharp objects on the ground and i used my tele kinetic projectile to pick them up and huck them right at the head of the uh, Jellico bounce, bounce. Okay. He bounces his knives back up into his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Jellico bounce, bounce drops and laughs no more, or at least laughs no more tonight. Um, okay, so that's before he dies. I want to, I want to say something. Okay. Just it's like Jellico. <laughs> More like Jared Leto. You suck. Jesus, Ooh. dude. The... the worst clown there ever was. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Well, he 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 drops, um, and that uh, leaves us with uh, Lavendir, do you want to move anywhere? You have one action left after that spell. Uh... Get here and take care of that robot. Yeah. Do you have anything that you can do to attack the robot? Yeah. I think I can... Uh... What is what exactly is a sickle? <laughs> it's technically a farming implement. Um, oh. But it can be used as a weapon, like a lot of farming implements. Am I able to to throw it? <laughs> uh, no, but you do have a sling, and that you can use in with a ra as a ranged attack. Is my sling loaded? 
Well, it's it's one of those things where loading it is so quick that you don't have to worry about the loading action. Okay. Then... So it's literally just a leather strap with a wider portion of a strap that you tuck a rock into or a sling bullet if it's something that's crafted for it. And you ah. swing it around and then you let it go. You let go of one end, not both ends. Otherwise, you, you fucked yourself. <laughs> that's a nat one. That's a nat one, baby. Um, but you let go of one of the straps, and it's supposed to sling the stone mm. really hard at something. Okay. I want oh, to looks like somebody didn't pay attention at Sunday school. I want to do that. <laughs> okay. So you just grab that first attack roll? Or hmm, it might be a second attack roll. Because you did make a spell attack. Right. So, yeah. You want to grab the second attack roll and drag and drop that onto the mechanical carn. Nice! Alright. It dings off of its metal skull? Head? Whatever. And that is your turn. Uh-huh. And we move on to Mike Onid. All right. More inspire courage. Oh, is it an action to maintain? It's uh, it only lasts one round. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, but you know it's only a single action cantrip, so. Oh, I cannot see the, uh, where's Mr. Kitty at? Oh, there it is. Mm, right, and then more electric heart. And it looks like Johnny Five is no longer alive. Oh no, Johnny Five! Oh wait, this isn't Johnny Five. This is like his psychopathic uh, stepbrother. Oh yeah, it's one of those uh, those other ones. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember those. Or like a whole oh, bunch. Oh my god. Where All right, is... I gotta shut down my computer. All right. I am. There we go. All right. Yay! I've got. I've got my black light, the crucial ingredient to wearing these damn claws. There we go. Now they glow. All right, cool. Right towards the end of the encounter. Of course I do that. All right. So you, um, you know what? Describe how you do this. Okay, after I get done inspiring everybody's courage, I uh, point at the robot, mm -hmm. and then I point up at the rainy sky, and it then lightning shoots down and strikes it dead, nah. causing its innards to become outers it it leaps in it, it jump jolts into the air its limbs spread out its head extends on the spring that's keeping it down and it shakes and then it falls to the ground the steaming pile of metal and springs and gears yes And with that, it is now quiet in the circus yard. Ah. 
uh, I've been wanting to do that for a very long time. Well, he was you most certainly... Unpleasant, Sorry, say that again, Tuck? Said he was a most unpleasant feller, all right. All right. Well, um, Professor? Yes? Uh, I do believe now is the time we should depart. Um, you're not wrong. Are you all ready to get the hell out of here? Yes. I'm ready. Oh, wait, one thing. Yeah, yes? I'm going to take uh, Jellico's hat and put it on my mushroom head. Now I'm ready. Aw, uh, yeah. Very well. Let's go. Oh, and I also let out a waft of uh, spores in Jellico's face. Does that do anything in particular? No. Oh, okay. the spores do come from the approximate nether region where an ass would be. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They leave an unpleasant odor and color. <laughs> well, let's just say he's going to have mold growing on his face very soon. Oof. Okay. So you guys head out? Yep. Let's... Uh, I do. Let's avoid the Glen of Uncommon Wonders. We, I think we were lucky getting out of there without, uh, without Adrivalo noticing us. We might have been stuck inside. Adrivalo, you know, is a satyr. He is not one of Mistress Dusklight's loyal lackeys. But he's Faye. And right. about as fucked up as you would expect Faye to be that we're oh, sticking around a carny. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's go, everyone. The gates to the south. Hopefully it's all clear from here. Sneaking, sneaking, hush, hush. <laughs> What's that from? Gallivant. Oh, of course. <laughs> I gotta watch that one these days. I saw the first episode. That's yeah, a good show. Oh, yeah. last two seasons. Right? So many good shows die before they get their stride. Yeah, but people don't appreciate musicals. Yep. Nobody does. Nobody does. All right. I am closing the map on my end. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. And as you all... Oh, that's not... As you all begin to head towards the exit of the Celestial Menagerie, you round a corner of a tent... <clears throat> Sorry, I'm pulling some stuff up. You round the corner and find Mistress Dusklight standing before the gate. Oh. A number of other members 
of the circus with her. Mistress Dusklight is a female catfolk. A very cruel disposition. Not even a sister, Felix. More of a cousin? Second cousin? You know, you never did get a good answer. <clears throat> Her supposed uncle and your father passed under mysterious circumstances. So it was hard to find the answer of that. There are a few other members of the circus, but chief among them is Mazael, who, suffice to say, would not be mm. quite as much of a pushover as Jellico. Wow. Male Asimar Redeemer. Well, that's the image they used. It's kind of generic, but whatever. Oh, okay. I was going to say, like, he... Well, they also... They they automatically have images unidentified, so they use the most generic uh, name for the character. So if I were to go... Okay, so here... So if I go that, now you would see his name is Masael. Ooh. Yeah. Hmm. Pitter patter, pitter patter like a mouse. Who thinks that they can escape my house? Well, this is certainly awkward. Anybody else saying? Oh. Hmm. Wait, so uh, I'm looking at this cat folk ringmaster. Mm hmm. Got a lot of mixed emotions going on. <laughs> <laughs> she, she inspires that in a lot of people. <clears throat> Hmm. Tuck's going to politely take off his hat and say hello there. <laughs> Who are that you again? Right. Oh, that's right. You shovel the animal's shit. Amongst other things, man, but that is an important job. Got to maintain a clean habitat for the creatures. Are you enjoying your evening stroll? Hustling, ma'am. Not been the most fun I've had in months. <laughs> oh yeah, just a little bit of clowning around. Miss Jellico. That was a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I, 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 I heard Miss Jellico. Yeah. I was just Where's like, Jellico? Oh, wait. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, you know, he's back there. Being introduced yes. to the worms. Actually. Oh, Jellico. Hmm. I think I saw them running off this other way. I point to the entirely opposite direction. <laughs> Maybe you ran off to join a law firm. I, I, uh, should I do like a deception roll or anything? Or I don't know. If you're honestly trying to deceive her rather than just be sassy, yes. If you're just trying to be sassy, don't worry about a deception. Uh, uh, don't worry about oh, it. Oh, no, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be deceptive. Oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Roll his deception roll. If you're trying to actually honestly convince her that he went off in another direction, do it. Ooh. Okay, okay. Let's see here. Hold on. 
We're gonna we're gonna take a look. We're gonna take a look. That that was a pretty good roll. Hmm. While the cat's away, the mice will play. You've not been in this game as long as I have, girl. Mazio motions, uh, looks over at her and says, Mistress Dusklight, you do not own these individuals, do you? No, but they work for me. Hmm. Well, as I understand, slavery in these parts is quite illegal, and they wish to leave your employ. Is that correct? Perhaps. Well, we're not kidding around about leaving now. Then. You should probably let them. You have more than enough side shows here to keep your show going, and there's never a shortage of people who want to join a circus. Also, if you were to prevent them from leaving of their own free will, he draws his sword, I would have no choice but to stop. Hmm. Fine, Tuck. Fine. <clears throat> Very well. You may depart. You, uh, you think we could, uh, maybe get a reference, uh, we are owed some back pay. How about I say that the back pay is the cost of that cat? Points to Mr. Kitty. And then we don't have to discuss things further. Is that amenable? to your purposes. Mm. Mazael kind of looks at Mistress Dusklight, then looks at you all and goes, I would probably take what you can and go. Yeah probably a good idea. So is that a no for the reference? Because uh, my resume is looking a little bare right now. No. As in, yes, that's a no. Oh, oh. Get out oh. of my sight already! <laughs> Mazel? Yeah, you're right. There's enough pussy footing around. She glares at you. Meanwhile, a little notification up on the upper right-hand corner of the screen says, Mistress Dusklight will remember that. I hope so. It's pretty funny. Yeah, I'd be disappointed if she didn't. Actually. Right? Like no, no, that's great. Just, you know, if I'm ever rolling random, I'll be like, oh, she remembers that. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> well, you know, that's the price for fame. Right? Exactly. And with that, Mistress Dusklight and her entourage marches off towards uh, where they last suspected Jellico was. All right. Well, and with we that... Should, uh, get the fuck out. Mm-hmm. And so with that, you all depart the Celestial Menagerie. 
heading for a different part of the island, one far, far from Escadar. Fine. God damn, I hope that that is actually the name of the town, otherwise that rhyme would mean nothing. Mm -hmm. Fine, we'll start our own circus with blackjack, hookers. <laughs> and get the circus. <laughs> remember, good. Uh, <clears throat> remember, good mm -hmm. Mike, Mr. Honeyd. The best revenge is often one's own success. Yeah, I suppose so. Well. Let's go meet with the others. And then perhaps we can actually do as you mentioned. And start our own circus. There's Myron? Gonna be Hookers, right? Well, I don't know about hookers. The old types follow circuses. They're almost like armies in that sense, so I wouldn't put it past. But, um, blackjack. We can totally have blackjack. Yes. Lavender. When it comes together like this. Lavender smiles uh, softly to the idea of starting their own circus. Hmm. Yes. Myron? <laughs> yes. I have always uh, wanted to do so. I think this will be a fun endeavor. You all know that Myron had joined the circus as a boy, um, wanting to be Mistress Dusklight's apprentice. And she took him under her wing. But she used him as little more than a slave. Think your typical unpaid intern job, but for many, many years, as opposed to one or two until you realize you need to get the fuck out and actually go and try in an entry level position. In fact, um, I think, I think perhaps I, I have a good name for the circus. The Circus of Wayward Wonders. Because we're all wondrous and Dear gods, are we wayward right now? I like that. That is such a good name. The professor goes, uh, looks particularly at you. And one thing I know we will not have is a freak show. In fact, I already have people mm -hmm. selected for my... Menagerie of Everyday Marvels. Mm. Perfectly normal, well, relatively normal people with marvelous stories. Because everybody can be marvelous. At least that's what I'm running with. I think that's a good slogan. If you like, we can workshop it a bit. Ah, uh, maybe. Okay. Well, the point is, I don't want a menagerie where the only thing we do is promote people for how unusual they are. I would rather a menagerie where we promote people for how exceptional they are. <clears throat> I've got a good idea for an act. What's that? Oh, it's very simple. It's a it's a friendly wrestling competition between uh, female cat folks, and we'll call it we'll call the location the litter box. 
That seems a little not gonna bit lie. too... Not going to lie, you had me in the first half there. Well, uh, I'm not going to lie either. It seems a little more exploitative than we probably want to lean towards. Hey, that sells, okay? Maybe we can find some willing volunteers. No blackmailing, though. Bare mineral blackmail. I would black never man. blackmail gotcha. anyone. Besides, it's a racist term, and I don't like using it. <laughs> God damn it, Darren. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> you already have three hero points. I know, I know, but, you know, what can I say? I'm inspired. Fair enough. Here, as a matter of fact, matter of fact, yeah, yeah. There. Fine. There you go. You're Aha. back. Aha. Yes. <laughs> now, for anybody watching, either now or in the future, um, I, I, I love having hero points replenish on the next session. But I also understand that not everybody's going to use all their hero points during the session because let's face it, sometimes sessions just don't need hero points so it would suck if somebody did so well in goofiness or role playing that they got three hero points and then all of a sudden they're down to one so i'm only going to reset hero points if they're not uh used by the end of a particular chapter in the story of the module um so yeah, that's just how I handle things as far as this goes. Um, that and it's how I handle things when I run 5th edition games, so I'm just going to play with hero points like I do 5th edition stuff, because why not? There's no reason why not, or no good reason. If you have a good reason, you're wrong, you don't. Um, or at least as, not as far as I care. Uh, so there we go. Anyway. With that, we will jump forward in time to squiggly when... Line, squiggly lines, squiggly lines, squiggly lines. Squiggly lines, squiggly lines. And while I was caught up in the heat of the moment of all of this introductory shenanigans, I do want to take a moment to have people actually properly describe their character. I know I had everybody give a quick rundown of what their class was, but, and feel free to not go into this since I am kind of putting people on the spot. Um, I would also love for people to describe what brought them to Mistress Dusklight's circus in the first place. If you don't want to come up with it right now, don't worry about it. We can do it next session, and then that way you guys got a week to think about it. So, I will start. I you. Oh, you got you got it. I got gotcha. you. Okay, so Lavender, <laughs> let's start with you. Okay, so I kind of wanted my character to be uh, a little bit more tactful and calculated. Uh, okay, and. Uh, a little bit quieter, as you could probably tell. Sure. Uh, and the reason why I was brought here in the first place was family ties and such and such and such. Uh, and the reason why I'm leaving is for my own reasons. And nobody else should be asking about it. Ah, okay. So you came to Mistress Dusklight Circus for family reasons. Uh, fam like more like family ties. Uh, ties to like, the circus, or because family you had led to you leaving, and you were like, "I need a place to go." Oh, hey, there's a circus. Uh, to the circus. Okay, so family ties led to you leaving the family, and that pushed you to the circus. Is that is that correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and do feel free, if you want, you can hammer out your background a little bit more over the next week and give me a little write-up. Just take this introductory session into account, and that way um, 
we can make it work with the rest of the campaign. And okay. your character background of being a mystic seer. Right. I wanted my character to be a little bit more, like, mysterious, but also, um, like, have a, like, kind of dark situation. No, oh, of course. I certainly understand that. And so far, uh, your character hasn't said too much. Uh, <laughs> tried deceiving Mistress Dusklight, but let's just say she's, I mean, she's cat folk. And she's a high-level cat folk. Um, <laughs> she, she, she knows a thing or two about lying. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, even, even your high roll, unfortunately, wasn't enough. Uh, but that said, work on it. And feel free to shoot me a write-up at some point over the next week. Uh, it can okay. be over. We can discuss it over Messenger or whatever. Tuck, okay. what about you? Well, as I said in my background, Tuck Buckford is a simple, humble man that comes from a remote farming community with a rather interesting and interweaving gene pool, let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. And he just got it into his head after his cousin got stolen from him by that monster that we all recall from the previous adventure during that prom. Oh, yeah. That it might be a good time to like go out and see the wider world and maybe meet somebody who doesn't have the same last name as him. That would probably be a good thing, you know? Mm -hmm. When the farm you live on is tied to a number of other farms that all have the same last name, you might want to go out and see the wider world. Very true. Okay. Mike. All right. Mike started out the way lots of leshies start out, being crafted for the sole purpose of being a familiar. In this particular case, Mike's Mike was the familiar to a uh, hag witch. Ooh. Yep. So, you know, she was a pretty standard hag, doing hag things, brewing potions, kidnapping children from remote villages and eating them. Standard shit. Okay. And, of course, being a hag, she eventually attracted the attention of adventurers who came into her remote hut and slaughtered her and took all of her stuff. Okay. Under normal circumstances, that would be it for the less she familiar. Just sort of discomportulate or whatever they yeah. do. I think they, yeah, they just return to being spirits or whatever. But... Mike had other ideas, and he basically did what a moldy fungus thing would do. He promptly covered and consumed the hag's dead body, becoming larger, more powerful, gaining some of her knowledge and magical abilities. Okay. And then, having free will, he decided, I'd like to go see the world. And I also noticed that this that my former master brought a lot of misery into the world. Me, I just want to see people smile. <laughs> so, traveled around and then eventually joined the circus. Hmm. All right. But yeah, Mike isn't terribly bright because, you know, his brain is made of plant matter. Yeah. But he makes up for it by being really, really charming. <laughs> okay all right david tell us about felix if you can i know you're muted if you can't uh, we can handle it next week. I'm going to take your... Oh, I got a message. One moment. I'm going to say that's a no, and we'll handle... Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, David. Thank you. That That's great. That's wonderful. Uh, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go over here to... To Felix, and I'm gonna go boom. You get a hero point for that. There you go. 
anyway. <clears throat> the mysterious narrator voice in the sky alluded to my familial connections to Mistress Duskalight. She took me in after the unexpected deaths of my family, where I naturally gravitated to the big cats, being cat folk myself. I studied and learned every trick I could to train cats for performance and attack. My small stature belies my skill with a whip and claws, dressed in fire-resistant ringmaster attire, and I wear a top hat. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Wow. That was very well done. I like it. All right. All right. So that was our introduction to Extinction Curse. Um, just a little way. Oh, oh, hold on. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> Takes a bow. Of course. Good on you, David. Good on you, Felix. So, uh, as I was saying, though, that is our introduction to the Extinction Curse. Next week, we will start um, with the new and improved circus of would would be circus performers who literally just escaped their their last circus and they're like we're gonna do our better with blackjack and hookers. Um, Damn straight. Circus of Wayward Wonders. Uh, during the beginning of next session, it might be a little boring because I'm actually gonna go over um, the circus. Uh, I guess you can say character sheet. It's it's a little weird. But I'm going to go over it with both my players and the audience because I want all to understand about it. Oh, Paizo and their weird habit of giving character sheets to things. Well, their habit of creating subsystems is really what it is. Well, hopefully said, it's not as complicated as the, the starship rules. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. One of these days, I'll learn those starship rules, and I'll be able to run a Starfinder campaign. Um, but, uh, as I understand, the rules they have for the circus are actually pretty solid, so um, hmm. I, I think we'll be fine. Uh, to give you guys a quick rundown from what I have picked up, uh, the general uh, consensus is, that, or the general conceit, is that in the week... Uh, prior to a performance, the the peop the movers and shakers of the circus are supposed to build up anticipation, and that's by buying advertisements, doing shows in the town, like little miniature performances, um, and and all sorts of things to try and get people hyped for the circus. I'm and telling you guys, the litter box is a sure thing. <laughs> We will get but, so but many here's, here's the thing. During the circus, everybody, all of the shows, and there are usually three acts of the circus. Um, there's uh, The first act has a couple of momentum-building acts. The second act has a whole bunch of acts. The third act's act has the finale. And each of these acts builds uh, excitement. And the excitement needs to meet or supersede the anticipation. So the excitement has to meet, match, or do better than the hype. Because if it doesn't, you guys lose money. If it does, you guys make money. Mm. Does that make... I, and that's just like the most bare bones description of the system. You guys got to hype up the circus... But you also don't got to. You also got to make sure you don't disappoint. Understand? Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I will try and get you all uh, the rules in PDF format. You don't have to read them because I'm gonna literally explain them to you guys during next session. Um, but you know, it'll help if you do. <laughs> so. Anyway, I'm going to say that that is it for tonight's session. Everybody say goodbye to our audience of, let me check, let me check stream chat. Two. We got two people in the audience. Say goodbye. 
Goodbye, Bye. 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 All right. I'm going to stop streaming now.